Hello again, friends. I'm glad you could join me again. I'd like to talk today a little bit about the Renaissance. The Renaissance is one of my favorite periods in history. It really marks the beginning of modern society in the Western world. The word Renaissance literally means rebirth. So what was reborn? Well, let's talk about what's going on in Europe at the time. The Renaissance we tend to think of as the 1400s and 1500s. And if you recall, Europe in the 1300s was dealing with this thing called the bubonic plague. And the Black Death killed 25% of the population of some cities, 50% of the population, 60% of the population of certain cities in Europe was decimated by the Black Plague. We had no idea what caused the plague. We had no idea how it was carried. We had no idea how to prevent catching it, and we had no idea how to cure it. So for a hundred years, Europe lived in morbid dread of the bubonic plague. Well, as we started coming out of that period and the plague became less prevalent, several changes happened in society. Number one was, so much of the workforce had died during the plague that there were more jobs than people to do the jobs. And if you know your economics, that means wages increase. It also means that there are opportunities for investment that were not available before. So once we get out of the 1300s, you see an increase in wages for the workforce and you see an increase in opportunity for investment. Well, that investment opportunity was grabbed by certain families in Europe that invested in banks, shipping uh, companies, the Medici family, for example, you've probably heard. This is a family in Florence that started a bank. Uh, Cosimo, uh, the father, the patriarch, started a bank that his son Lorenzo took over. These became the patrons of the Renaissance. So, if you put them in modern terms, the Medici family had around two billion dollars, which is a lot of money, but in comparison to the rest of the world, that wouldn't even make them the top 200 richest people in modern society. So, what did they do that makes us remember them? They spent their money. Well, what did they spend it on? That's what brings us to the Renaissance. The Renaissance was a rebirth of Greek philosophy. And that philosophy centered around three tenets, truth, wisdom, and beauty. The foundation is truth. This is geometry. This is why Euclid and Pythagoras and these people are still remembered. Truths are unshaking. Your opinion does not change a truth. So the search for universal truth was very important to Greek philosopher. Wisdom, how do we interpret and interpolate and figure out what is truth, absolute truth, and what is not an absolute truth? And number three, beauty, how do we convey these truths to the rest of the world to inspire the rest of the world to make the world a better place to live in. That's what drove the Medicis. So when Lorenzo Medici spent money to have art produced, he was not doing it for vanity's sake. He wasn't doing it in order to invest. He wasn't doing it to make money. He was doing it in order to profess truth, create wisdom, and make beauty so that the rest of the world would be a better place. So we know of names like Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Raphael, Titian, Brunelleschi. All of these artists were paid to create art. Our modern society has gotten that reversed. We make art and then we sell it. 
The difference in a patron is a patron goes to an artist and pays them money to make art. To put the amount that they spent in modern terms, if Bill Gates were to become a patron, Bill Gates would spend $1 billion a year going to artists and saying, paint me pictures. That's why we remember the Medici family. So they also created communities. They had ideals for proportions. Here's how high a building should be. Here's how big the square should be. You look at the Duomo by Brunelleschi in Florence. Those proportions grew out of Greek proportions. Leonardo da Vinci, he was a brilliant mathematician. A lot of his work revolved around proportions of the human face, proportions of the human body, proportions of flight, proportions that give us perspective. How did we create vanishing point? And if you look at paintings like the Mona Lisa, you see there's a vanishing point that was created by geometry. So when you look at art in the Renaissance period, what you're looking at is an attempt to convey the absolute truths of geometry and mathematics, the wisdom that we as humans have in order to discern and interpolate, and the ability to create a beautiful work of art for the purpose of inspiring people to make the world a better place. Peace to you.